back with Sherlock Holmes, the epic Granger fair. The game is afoot, not a word. Into your clothes and come. I'll wait for you in the sitting room. I've just received a note from Inspector Lestrade, a letter from the suburbs. He is in need of my presence. Whenever he has asked for my assistance, it has always turned out to be entirely justified. I fancy that every one of his cases has found its way into your collection. Uh, yes, they all seem worthy of... However, I regret your fatal habit of looking at everything from the point of view of a story instead of a scientific exercise. Oh, Holmes, you... I beg your pardon, I digress. It would be much better to examine this letter than to try to convince you. the telescope. Of course, she's always there. Ah, baby, come over here. The letter is on the table, Holmes. You <laughs> should take a look. I can tell from Lestrade's handwriting that he was in a hurry when he wrote this letter. A wax seal with the monogram E.B. The Brackenstall family coat of arms. Run the case. So, what is it, Holmes? Promising, as always. It appears to be a case of murder. So you believe that Sir Eustace is dead? I should say so. Lestrade wouldn't have sent for me for less. His writing shows considerable agitation, and he is not an emotional man. These people belong to high society. The quality of the writing paper, the EB monogram, their coat of arms. The crime was committed before midnight. Holmes, how can you possibly tell? Well, it is all thanks to Lestrade. He wrote his letter at 3.30 in the morning. Imagine the chain of events before that. The local police had to be called in. Scotland Yard was notified. Lestrade himself had to make haste there and finally compose the letter he sent to me. All of that makes for a fair night's work. It makes sense. Lestrade also speaks of the woman he released. That seems to indicate that she had been held somewhere during the crime. Much time has been wasted. Let us find a cab and go to Abbey Grange immediately. I live in hope of an interesting morning. Um, souvenirs. I'm just gonna. Get me a wardrobe. I think I was pressed the wrong one actually. Makeup table. Can I wear the hat? Oh. That's not the hair I wanted. What have I done? Early for a deduction. Ah, oh, Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson, here you are. I'm very glad that you have come. 
But perhaps I should not have troubled you after all. And why is that? Lady Brackenstall has come to her senses, and she has given so clear an account of the affair that there is not much left for us to do. You remember that Lewisham gang of burglars? What, the three Randalls? Exactly. The father and two sons. It's their work. They stole a silver service, which is of great value. Sir Eustace Brackenstall is dead, then? Yes. His head was knocked in with his own poker. A violent act of aggression. Yes, the poor lady. She has had a most dreadful experience. She was assaulted and tied to a chair. But I think that you would best see her and hear her account of the facts. She is in the morning room with her maid, Teresa Wright. Where is the body of the deceased? In the dining room. We haven't touched anything. All right. I'm going to examine it. Very good, Watson. Very good, Watson. Sir Wartham Brackenstall. Lord George Brackenstall. Ladies, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting Inspector Lestrade in this investigation. Mr. Holmes, I am the wife of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. We were married only a year ago. I am sorry for your loss. Please accept my deepest condolences. I suppose that it is no use my attempting to conceal that our marriage has not been a happy one. I fear that all would tell you that, even if I were to attempt to deny it. Australian. Can you describe to me the events of yesterday evening? Is it really necessary? I have already told Inspector Lestrade all that happened. Yes, madam, it is. I will tell you then. Sir Eustace retired about half past ten. I sat in this room until after eleven, absorbed in a book. Before I went upstairs, I entered the dining room to fetch a candle and... Oh, God. Please, go on. As I approached the French window, I found myself face to face with an elderly, broad-shouldered man who had just stepped into the room. Close behind the first man, I saw two others. One of them struck me a savage blow with his fist and fell me unconscious to the ground. And then? When I came to myself, I found that they had secured me tightly to a dining room chair. It was at that instant my unfortunate husband entered the room. He fought with the intruders? Yes, I think he had heard them, for he was holding his stick. But they were three, and he eventually succumbed. One of them, the elder one, struck him a terrible blow with the poker. I fainted once more. When I opened my eyes, they had withdrawn. Then my brave Teresa came to my assistance. Did these three villains steal anything? Yes. I found that they had taken the silver from the sideboard. But you can see for yourself in the dining room. You mentioned that your marriage was not a happy one. Was there anything specific that was troubling you? He was not a nice man when he was drunk. And he suffered from dark moods, but nothing else. The bruises on your hands are at least one week old. Your husband caused those bruises? Oh, do you? Yes, he did. He was very angry at the time. Out of control. Again. Sir Eustace was a drunkard. To be tied to such a man for life is worse than death. Your ladyship? Hmm. <laughs> Teresa, I would like to hear your testimony. Certainly, sir.
Hmm. Oh, I'm missing something. As I sat by my bedroom window, I saw three men in the moonlight down by the lodge gate. But I thought nothing of it at the time. Oh, if I'd known. And then? I went to bed, and it was more than an hour after that I heard my mistress scream. And down I ran, to find her tied to the chair and him on the floor with his head smashed. That's all I know. picture hmm. <gasps> these scratches are most definitely made by the picture frame <gasps> this is sir eustace's safe there may be something important inside good. i must ask lady brackenstall to open it this photograph of lady brackenstall and her maid teresa was taken at a port, but which one? So the lady and her maid came from Australia a year and a half ago on this ship. Oh, I think there's more to this too. The description of the Randall gang provided by Lady Brackenstall is identical to the one in the Times article. Almost too identical. Something tells me that. Lady Brackenstall, could you open this wall safe? No, it is my husband's safe. I do not know the combination. We have to open it. Your ladyship? You're no help. Ooh. You should examine the body of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. It appears that the bell rope was cut by someone taller than me. A fur trader's cabin. So, Watson, what have you learned from examining Sir Eustace's body? Well, I can confirm that the death was instant. Sir Eustace was facing his attacker when he received the blow to his head. There are no other apparent injuries. Why is he barefoot? Barefoot. He had therefore been in bed yeah. and did not have time to fully dress. Quite a large stick, a formidable weapon. The head was cracked with the force of the blow. That must be the murder weapon. 
This this murder weapon's not missing. Okay, it might be. It is covered in blood. Sir Eustace might have struck his head upon it while falling from the blow. That is one possible explanation. Okay, I think I've solved it. Sailor's knot. That's interesting. This rope was handled by the murderers. We need a scent hound to follow their trail. I will take it with me. This is the chair that Lady Brackenstall was tied to. I think it's the two ladies. The hunting scene. These wine bottles are expensive and mostly from France. This candlestick is valuable. It is interesting that it was not also stolen. An empty silverware box. It appears that the intruders have stolen the contents. Well, that's not everything here. Is it? Maybe it is. No, it would be green otherwise. There's something I'm missing. This candlestick is very... There's clearly something to look at, and I'm guessing it's this, but it's just not letting me. Right. These wine... Hmm. Maybe the claim glitched. A decanter standing next to the open bottle. An inseparable pair indeed. Chateau Calon Segur. French wine. Grand Cru. This glass has some wine traces. But no visible bees wing. There is bees wing at the bottom, as if the wine had not been decanted before being poured. <gasps> this glass has some wine traces, but no visible bees wing. It is rather strange that only one of these glasses has dregs of bees wing inside it, while the other two are clear. Interesting. This door leads to the upstairs bedrooms. Apparently the criminals did not venture there. Maybe they did. It's really pissing me off that I can't... Uh, I mean, look at it.
An empty silver. There's clearly something else. This candlestick. <sighs> That's a clue I won't be able to get. The death was instant. Oh, cheers, Watson. The hunting scene. Oh, this just seems long. Okay, no need to go out there then. Brigham Brackenstall, Lord Ramsay Brackenstall, Baron Linden Brackenstall. The Brackenstall family seems rather austere. I've searched outside for footprints <coughs> without any luck. A deer hunt. I can't. Wait. Oh, I thought it was green. Well, there's nothing else to look at. So clearly. We're in trouble. Because I can't look. Fucking prick. These wine bottles. Just look down or up. Oh. No, that's silverware. I'm sorry. This is annoying. The game's broke. Wait. A bottle of Are wine you mad? is missing here. That was it. The criminals did not thoroughly ransack the house. They only took a little silverware. Necessary. Apparently, there's something else to look at here. Please leave my man right. alone. She suffered so much, <gasps> she deserves some rest. My Mary alone. You lovers. Let us try to open this safe. This safe can be cracked. I only have to pay attention. The dial will vibrate when it is set to the correct number.
Oh. I think I went past it. This is how you do it. It is common practice to keep one's valuables in a safe behind a painting. It should not really pose a challenge for a criminal. Antique coins, possibly of value, but they're scattered without care. This is how we do it. Sir Eustace's doctor speaks of his violent behavior. Yes, Sir Eustace was an extremely violent man. A detestable human being, to be more precise. It is true that he once threw a decanter at me, and all because I dared to stand up to him in defense of my mistress. Sly devil. God forgive me that I should speak of him so now that he's dead. But a devil he was, if ever one walked the earth. We met him only 18 months ago. She'd only just arrived in London. Yes, it was her first voyage. She'd never been from home before. One her with his title and his money and his false London ways. If she made a mistake, she has paid for it, if ever a woman did. She doesn't have any friends here, so it was specially hard for her. There are three glasses on the dining room table. I was wondering if... Oh, I forgot. When I came to myself the first time, each of them had a glass in his hand. They might have been a father and his two sons. They talked together in whispers, and then they left. Your ladyship? Bullshit. What do you know about Sir Eustace, Inspector? What was his reputation? A charming man when sober, but an absolute demon when he was drunk. In such moments, he was apparently <laughs> capable of anything. Why, once he splashed fuel on Lady Brackenstall's dog and set it alight. Whoa. One day he threw a decanter of wine at Miss Wright's head. Hmm, the alcohol seemed to madden him. 
To the point that we were forced to intervene several times to avoid a scandal. Deserve to die then. Do the chemistry thing. Let us see how the rope was cut. <coughs> the fibers at the end of the rope are smoothly cut. Let us try to find out what tool was used to cut the rope. If I cut the rope with a knife, it matches the original. Well, that was easy. Putting things together. Come on, Toby. We need the best nose in the British Empire on this case. I agree with you, Toby, that Watson's shoe is preferable to Mrs. Hudson's cold cuts. Do we swap Watson for the dog? What's like that? the dog. Oh, I knew that shed was looking fishy. I called it up. The intruders entered the shed for some reason when they were making off with the silverware. I reckon the silver is in there. Or in the well. The scent leads to the well. I should check it. It's more. More. The intruder's trail is lost behind this wall. 
the criminals left the house through the French window. They walked to the shed, then across to the well, before fleeing by climbing over the wall. I wonder why they chose such a winding route. Because. <gasps> There's something glittering at the bottom there, but how can I reach it? Hmm. The bot. Remove it then. I need a hook. Uh, we'll get that from the shed. The wheel handle is open. Probably like what they did. This hook might be useful. Bags of seeds. Some empty bags were recently moved. This old suitcase sounds hollow. It must be empty. Small gardening tools. Nothing of great interest. Oh, that's skillful. Let me guess. It's the silverware. silverware. This is hardly a coincidence. The Brackenstall coat of arms. It appears that we have found the stolen silverware. <gasps> There's more. Maybe not. No, but there were three people. <laughs> Yo. Yo. Is it? 